So, so um, this is a teaser for what I'm going to be talking about later on this afternoon about using the CFER, so I'll get into a lot more detail about how we used it, but I'll just tell you briefly um, a little bit about the project and um, what we did. So um, <coughs> we have used the CFER at the, the VA Diabetes Query, the um, Quality Enhancement Research Initiative, for a bunch of studies, but the one I'm going to be talking about today is VA's Specialty Care Transformation Evaluation. And this consists of four initiatives to improve VA patients' access to specialty care. This is a big concern within the VA because we're a um, national healthcare delivery system. Obviously, we have a lot of patients who live in more rural areas, and these patients have challenges seeking access or getting access to specialists. Um, the specialists are located in the big cities and the tertiary care facilities, and a lot of our patients are in more rural areas, so it's challenging for them to travel. The wait line, our specialists are limited, so the waiting time to get in to see them is, uh, can be excessive. So VA is very focused on how do we increase access to these um, specialists. And without going into the details of the four specific initiatives, let me just say that basically they're all kind of focused on helping our primary care providers do additional stuff, more preparatory work, uh, more workups, and then some of the smaller or less com um, complex procedures uh, so that they can take away a little bit of work for the specialists or do some upfront work at the local facilities before the patients have to go to see the specialists. Um, so it's a lot of training of the PCPs through some telehealth initiatives, some telemedicine initiatives, through some other sorts of mini residency training programs. Um, but the point being, our stakeholder here is the Office of Specialty Care Transformation in VA Central Office. So this is the organization at the tippy top level who is rolling out all of these initiatives. And so they engaged us, um, the Evaluation Center, which actually consists of four different um, uh, centers, but they engaged us to do this evaluation. So they are our primary stakeholder because they are the ones who are paying um, to a large extent, at least initially, for the rollout of these initiatives, and they wanted um, us to evaluate them. So there are two major sort of components to the evaluation. One, I would say, more is more quantitative. There's a group that is looking at kind of the outcomes and the utilization of services based on VA data sets. And then the second component is the more mixed methods, qualitatively oriented group, and that's what I'm going to talk about. And so the objectives of that group, the mixed methods groups, are to understand the reasons for the differences in implementation success across the participating facilities. So, um, and by implementation success, I think it, I can accurately say it would be defined along the re-aim construct of adoption. We tend to um, look at what's been the highest uptake. That's what we consider implementation success. We can argue about whether that's the most appropriate measure, but we have good data on it. So um, we want to understand why some sites who participate in these initiatives can uptake or can um, have, bigger, have greater uptake than th those who do not. Um, so for each of these initiatives, they're not being rolled out to all medical centers, but there is a pretty good sample of facilities participating in each of these programs. So um, we're going to find the high utilizers and the low utilizers and try to find out the differences between them. And then based on these findings, if you can see what the differences are between these two groups, we can then try to make recommendations to our stakeholders about um, how to improve dissemination of the um, initiatives to other facilities who aren't currently um, participating in the program. So, of course, the framework we're using is the CIFR, um, and uh, this was developed by Laura Damschroeder at our query um, with others, and I was part of that group and have worked very closely with Laura all along the way. Um, and it does focus on those contextual factors affecting implementation success. Again, I'll go into a little more detail this afternoon, but these are the primary um, domains. And um, 
I think for those of you who've used other models, you'll see that, or see hopefully some overlap or some similarities with other models. That's the whole point of the CFER, but again, I'll talk more about that later this afternoon. Um, so, as I said, this is the purpose of the design. When I think about the characteristics of the different designs that Borsuk had talked about, this is not a particularly rigorous design um, because this is something that our stakeholders asked us to do. They are rolling out this initiative. We didn't really have the opportunity to design it in the way we wanted to. Um, so I would consider it to be an observational design. There's, there aren't really any controls. Um, uh, but we do, um, but we are comparing. So we're comparing, as I said, um, sites with low impl implementation success versus high implementation success. So for this mis mixed methods component of the study, we do a purposeful sample of the facilities that are participating in the init initiative so we get the high users and the low users. And then we want to determine which of the C4 constructs rate more negatively at the low implementation sites compared to those that, and that rate more positively at the high implementation sites. It's sort of a correlation analysis. So when we look at the constructs, and when I talk about some of the specific constructs this afternoon, or when I introduce the CFER to you, you'll see all of these different things that you've noticed can be potential barriers and facilitators, and that this, all of the sites might talk about. But it doesn't really matter in terms of which ones are most important, except for the ones that were barriers at the low sites and facilitators at the high sites because all of those constructs are potentially important. As it was mentioned earlier, the CIFR has about 40 constructs. And um, you can't make recommendations to your stakeholders to um, uh, focus on 40 different constructs. So we want to hone in on those that distinguish between the, the low and the high sites. And the methodology that we use for doing this, again, I'll explain this afternoon. But then once we hone in on those key constructs, which have been for the first three initiatives, there, or the first two, they're about four to five, so a very reasonable number. Then we can develop recommendations based on those specific constructs. So that's the key to this particular approach. Um, so the study measures in this case are pretty much the CIFR constructs. Um, data collection is um, semi-structured interviews. And the problem with, of course, semi-structured interviews, very resource intensive. Um, but it does allow us to still rate these constructs while also collecting um, some very rich information, which is really key to, with, to helping us with the recommendations. Because we want to find out not just that the constructs exist at the sites, or not just that they're barriers or facilitators, but how they are barriers or facilitators at the sites. Because then that will directly inform the recommendations. And that's key to have that rich information to be able to do that. You couldn't get that sort of information with just a survey. But we do use surveys. Here's the mi mixed methods approach um, of a larger sample of participants to triangulate, to sort of confirm the results or refute the results of the interviews. Because sometimes when you do the interviews, they'll bring up all these constructs. But they're not really that important when you do the surveys. Um, if you look at just the number of different respondents who say it's a problem, not, it's not necessarily, um, it doesn't necessarily coincide with the level of significance that the interview respondents seem to, um, to describe them as. Um, so in one case, we found something that the interview respondents talked a lot about, but then when we did the surveys, it wasn't really as big of an issue. So it is important to do the surveys for that reason, to see really are these significant issues or not. Oops. So um, our analysis approach, we did something, we did a rapid analysis approach, which again I'll talk about a little bit this afternoon, just because, um, you know, the stakeholders want this information sooner rather than later. Um, we coded the data by C for construct, we rate each construct, again, it's not enough to know, just know that leadership um, was an issue, it was in this particular site, was leadership poor? Or was it good? So you need to rate them, either negatively or positively. Um, then we developed this matrix to look at the correlation. Now granted, this is done very subjectively because our sample size is quite small. 
But what we're hoping to do, because we're using the CIFR across multiple studies, is we'll start to amass a repository of these data, of these data where we can do more um, syntheses and do some more rigorous sets of analyses than just sort of eyeballing the correlations in a matrix. But this is how we start, and this um, is helpful, again, to honing in on those most important constructs. We triangulate with the survey data, as I just described, and then we develop the recommendations based on the key constructs. Um, so sharing the findings, not very earth shattering. We do reports, presentations with our stakeholders. Um, those have been, I don't, I have some of my colleagues here. I would say those have been met with rather, in my estimation, with somewhat lukewarm um, response. I'd like to see some more enthusiastic uh, um, uh, responses on the part of them. But I think what they really need and want is a tool, toolkit development, which we're working on next, based, again, on these specific recommendations. Um, that they can show to the sites and say, you can use these if you want to adopt these particular initiatives. So lesson learn, lessons learned. Oh, I forgot to mention one key aspect. In addition to these interviews and the um, surveys, we do site visits, which um, provide even yet more information in detail. Again, very helpful for our recommendations. They, um, the people who have participated in them have said they are invaluable. And um, this is good for me to know because I'm behind the scenes and I don't fully appreciate this. In fact, I think when I see all the effort that goes into planning for these and doing them, it just seems like so much trouble, especially given all the constraints associated with travel funding for the VA. Um, but I have been reassured that those participating in them say they're highly valuable because you do get information that you don't get on the phone interviews, right? Is that true? Um, so those are important. Um, this probably goes without saying that you want to interview, when you do interview people, you want to do it with a wide range of um, participants because their perspectives are going to be very different. This mixed methods approach is extremely beneficial because they inform each other. The surveys inform the interview data and vice versa. And then uh, here are a couple of references just on the CIFR. The first one is the original article that describes the CIFR, and then the second one um, talks about the approach that I just described, where you choose the low and the high sites, rate the constructs, find the ones that are most important, make recommendations. So, so that's our approach. <laughs> <laughs>